welcome to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called The Bunny's Big Leap, an adaptation of a story from Andrew Lang's fairy book, written for you by Daniel Hines. Thanks! Enjoy the episode! The Bunny's Big Leap Once upon a time, there lived a scared little bunny named Charlie. He was afraid of the bigger rabbits who would bully and boss him around. He was afraid of the rushing river where all the tastiest wild onions grew. He was once even afraid of his own shadow when it surprised him suddenly after a cloudy day. That was embarrassing enough, but worst of all, he was afraid of heights. Other rabbits would jump and leap and soar through the air, but the thought of being so high up made Charlie's heart jump and leap and soar in his belly. No, the poor thing was probably the only rabbit who never jumped at all if he could help it. Instead, he hurried along the ground, quiet and stooped, hoping no one would bother him. Slow and low he would whisper to himself as he flitted from bush to bush. Charlie lived with his Nana, who was the oldest rabbit in the entire warren. She was so old that she was nearly blind, even though she ate plenty of carrots her whole life through. Most of her days were spent sitting in her favorite chair, peacefully knitting loose rabbit fur into little gloves and scarves for winter. She relied on Charlie to get her food, but her little grandson's timid nature meant that they were often hungry. It's not that Charlie didn't care. On the contrary, he cared so much he thought his heart would pop. He loved his Nana with everything he had, but he was too afraid to go near the rushing river. That was the only place where the wild onions grew, so he was forced to find what little he could under the bushes where he felt safe. The other rabbits feasted on wild onions. He and his Nana ate acorns. One day, Charlie woke up to a terrible ruckus in the kitchen. He got up from bed, stretched his fuzzy paws, and headed in. He found his Nana clanging around pots and pans, a pantry's worth of ingredients laid out on the table. Oh, Charlie, good, you're up, she said. We're having the cottontails over for dinner tonight, and I'd love to make my famous onion soup. I know you don't like it down by the river where the wild onions grow, but do you think you could fetch me just a few? Charlie's heart started hammering. He'd do anything for his Nana, but this was the first time she'd asked him to get onions. He knew in his mind it was safe, but all the same, it made his fur sweat. Please? Nana asked. I'll make you a carrot cake for dessert. Carrot cake was Charlie's favorite. Nana knew all his weaknesses. Okay, I'll go get them right now. Charlie made his way down to the river. As he got closer... He could hear the rish-rosh rushing of the waters as they burbled by. The air smelled different, and everything was just a little damp. Hey, look, it's the baby bunny Charlie, said one of the other rabbits. Finally brave enough to come down? Oh, oh, aren't you afraid of the wawa? Charlie blushed, ashamed and angry all at once. He stomped closer to where the wild onion greens grew. The river was close now, all thunder loud and moving so swiftly it would surely suck him under if he fell in. You can do this, he said to himself. You can do this. He got closer. Water sprayed his whiskers and he almost ran, but then he thought about his Nana. She was so sweet and she deserved to have her favorite soup. He pulled out one wild onion and then another. Hey, this isn't so bad, he said. Sure, the river was loud, but it's not like he had to get that close to it. And he didn't have to jump at all, so his fear of heights was safe too. Soon, he had an armload of wild onions, and he turned to head back home. For a moment, he thought the others would be proud of him. 
He had conquered his fear of the river, after all. When he looked at them, though, they only laughed again, right in his whiskers. That's right, baby bunny, they shouted. Hop home afraid again. I'm not afraid, I'm just all done, Charlie yelled back, but they only laughed and ignored him. When he got back to the cabin, though, his Nana swept him up in a big bunny hug. Oh, Charlie, you got me the onions. You're so brave, my onion hero. Charlie beamed, forgetting all about the others by the river. Nana got to chopping and seasoning and mincing and moving, and soon the entire burrow smelled so good, Charlie wanted to lick the air clean. Oh, I need to get the stove on, she said after a bit. Charlie, would you mind running to the hearth and getting some fire for me? Charlie nodded and set out the door. Fire was hard for rabbits to make and hard to keep burning, so the warren always kept a central fire going in their common hall, called the hearth. They all took turns keeping it fed, and when you needed a bit of fire to cook or clean, you could come and get a torch. Hey, Beverly, Charlie called when he ran into the hearth. I need some fire for dinner. The burly bunny called Beverly held up a paw, blocking his way. Charlie skidded to a halt, his big feet kicking up a cloud of dust. Sorry, kiddo, Beverly said. The fire went out last night when it rained. Liza's gone to get a torch from another burrow, but uh, she won't be back until tomorrow. Well, but my Nana needs to cook her soup. Well, she'll have to do it tomorrow then. Sorry, Charlie. The little bunny nodded and headed back outside. Instead of going straight home, he made his way down towards the river, hoping to feel brave again, if only for a second. He stayed out of sight of the others, just losing himself in the river's roar, until something caught his eye. Was that? Yes! Across the river, there was an old cabin. Humans would come and stay in it from time to time. They'd fish in the river and steal all the berries and just generally make a lot of noise. They were mostly harmless, and there was one thing they did almost every night. They'd sit by a campfire. And there was one blazing right now. Charlie saw the fire was built of lots of little sticks, and he could surely steal one for a torch. It was so close he could have run there in less than a minute, if not for the river in between. Charlie thought about jumping over the river. Other bunnies had done it from time to time when the humans left behind some particularly tasty food. It was always a risk, but if you jumped high enough, you could do it. Well, someone could do it. Charlie was experimenting with being brave, but the thought of being high up still made his stomach sick. Leave jumping to the other rabbits. He'd have to figure something else out. He sat for a few minutes and waited, and finally, he got his chance. A group of fuzzy river otters was floating downstream. They had grown fat on mussels and clams, and each one was like a slick, cuddly raft. There were at least a dozen, and they stretched in a loose group from one side of the river to the other. Charlie had an idea. It scared him terribly. So he pushed it to the back of his head and just started running. He barreled along the riverbank, and the other rabbits laughed when they saw him gunning for the edge. Going to try and jump it? You'll just fall, baby bunny, one teased. You aren't going to impress us, sneered another. I'm not going for you, Charlie said, looking at the otters in the river intently. The smell of onion soup and carrot cake filled his nose. I'm going for my Nana. He ran forward, faster than he usually dared to run, but still nice and low to the ground. He leapt from the shore before he could think twice about the roaring, rushing river below. He came down on the back of the first otter, wobbled, and then got his balance. Oh, hey, what you doing there, little hare? 
the otter asked. I'm crossing the river, Charlie said, and then leapt again before he could freeze up. He hit another otter and leapt before he even balanced, landing on a third, a fourth, and then he started to tumble. The otter giggled and spun in the water, and Charlie felt himself lurching towards the depths. He flipped ears over tail and braced himself for the splash, and he thumped onto the sandy shore. His rear got a little wet, but he leapt up onto the dry grass and then sat, catching his breath. Nice one! called one of the bunnies back across the river. Charlie looked over his shoulder, but he couldn't tell who'd said it. Most of them seemed to ignore that he'd made it across at all. Well, whatever. It wasn't about them. It was about getting fire for his Nana. She was the best, and she deserved the best, and that meant hot onion soup. It was still early evening, but the human's fire was crackling away. There were three of them sitting on logs, and they were laughing and sharing drinks around the flames. Just gotta get one little torch, Charlie whispered to himself. Here we go now. You're a big, brave bunny. You're a big, brave bunny. He crept closer. He was used to moving slow and low, so he was able to get right up behind a log, where the fire was warm and cheery just a couple feet away. The humans seemed to be distracted talking. Charlie could see a small stick, just one end burning. It would be a perfect torch. Part of the little bunny was scared out of his mind, but the other part couldn't seem to stop. He'd already come this far, and he wouldn't let himself run away now. Gathering all his courage, Charlie darted forward and grabbed the burning stick. He turned and bounded away as the human shouted, or he tried to. The burning stick caught on a fire log and jerked Charlie to a stop. It was only a second, but that was enough for one of the humans to swing a sack down and over his head. Next thing he knew, he was trapped in burlap and being carried away. No, he hollered. Let me go! But of course, the humans just heard cute rabbit noises. A second later, Charlie felt himself laid on a wooden floor, the sack open. Heart hammering in terror, he peeked out. He was inside the human's cabin. There were a few bunks, a wooden table, and piles of gear. All right, cute one, the human said. My kiddo has always wanted a rabbit for a pet. You wait here in the cabin until I can hike you back home. He turned and left, closing the door behind him. Charlie immediately started running all over the cabin, looking for an escape. Every hole and crack had been sealed to keep out the cold that came every winter. There was no way out. Charlie was trapped. What do I do? He wailed to himself, more scared than ever. This is what happens when you try to be brave. You get captured and taken away, and Nana never gets her onion soup. Charlie slumped down, listening to the human's laughter drifting in through the window. The window! He got back to his fuzzy feet and looked. There, up in the wall, was an open window. It had a latch for keeping it shut in the winter, but the humans had left it open for the cool spring air. Charlie peered up at it. It was high in the wall, higher than he had ever jumped before. Just looking at it made his stomach leap and flip. He thought he would be sick, but it was the only way out. I'm a big, brave bunny. I'm a big, brave bunny, he said, backing up. Then he yelled, Onion soup! and ran forward, leaping with all his might. He soared into the air, higher than he had ever dared, and the room fell away beneath him. His jump was so strong, his floppy ears actually brushed the top of the open window as he flew through, eyes squeezed shut in terror. He landed in the grass, next to the fire. The bunny, roared a human. Get him quick! Without stopping to think, Charlie grabbed a torch from the fire and started running. The humans pounded after him, their big, clumsy feet loud as a stampede. 
The flames fanned as Charlie ran and the torch burned bright. All of the other bunnies across the river turned and saw Charlie running, torch blazing in his mouth and humans hot on his heels. Run, Charlie! they shouted. Come on! Go! Charlie heard the roar of the humans behind him, the roar of the river ahead. There were no otters this time, just the dark and angry waters rushing by. Full of fear and hope, Charlie jumped as hard as he could. He soared into the air, the humans falling behind, the river dropping away. All his problems dropped away, and for a moment, Charlie felt weightless. He felt perfect. Why had he ever been so afraid? He landed on grass and rolled to a stop. The humans were on the far side of the river, unwilling to swim across. The other bunnies looked at Charlie for a long moment, and then they burst into cheers. We're so sorry! You're no baby bunny, they said. That jump was incredible! They were all like, you get back here, and you were all like, no way, jump, whoosh, yeah. They put Charlie and his torch on their backs and paraded him back to Nana's house. When she saw her grand bunny on the shoulders of half the Warren, she just smiled wide. Oh, you got the fire, she said. Thank you, Charlie, and you brought friends. Well, I hope you all like onion soup. Another cheer went up, and they all went into Nana's burrow to help cook dinner. When they finished, they ate. It was the best soup Charlie ever had. The End Thanks for listening! 